Welcome to the No Guilt Fangirls Podcast, where liking what you like is never a bad thing. Here's your host and head fangirl in charge, Patty Holiday. Hey y'all, I'm your host and head fangirl in charge, Patty Holiday. Welcome to the No Guilt Fangirls Podcast. If you're new around here and haven't had a moment to leave a five star review or a rating, uh, we'd appreciate you doing so. It helps with the algorithms. It helps others find us. And everyone knows it is no fun to fangirl alone. And I'm just, you know, kind of a side note, one of the reasons I even started this podcast was to amplify female voices in the kind of nerdy fangirl atmosphere, because I just don't feel like there's enough. Um, So, you know, if if you don't hate us, then (laughs) it would be awesome (laughs) if you'd go ahead and do that for us. Um, And by us, I mean, I have Ashley back and Julia back, and we are continuing our breakdown and our recapping of our episodes of Loki, which is, as everyone knows, streaming on Disney Plus right now. And um, it's amazing. I think we're all really happy with what is happening and what is going on. I am very curious to hear how we feel about this episode, however, because it took a little bit of a turn. This is episode three. Uh, it took a little bit of a turn. It was a little bit different. And Julia's sobbing. Okay, yes. so now we know how Julia feels about it. Uh, there, was a, there was a lot of... Um, interesting things that happened in this one. And we're going to go through and break it down. And um, as always, Ashley is our comic book expert. And so for those of us who I still admit, I am still confused. Like what's two Lokis? I don't like, I don't get this. I really, I need somebody to spell it out for me. Well, that's what Ashley's here for. Okay. So she spells things out and she kind of breaks things down. (laughs) If you're confused on that level, she's our resident geek girl and she's going to do that. Julia is our resident Tom Hiddleston fangirl. She this is her man. Like even her husband knows it's her man. (laughs) Like, um, I saw a meme the other day and it was the side by side of, uh, I think, what was it? 2015 and then 2019 where Tom Hiddleston came out on Comic-Con and the first one he was in costume and the second one. And the the guy up front says, my wife loves you. And he Mm -hmm. totally character and starts laughing and then the second when the guy comes uh, another guy who knows it might have been the same guy yells out my wife still loves you anyway somebody screenshot that and they were like um uh, basically this could be my husband <laughs> and i was like oh that's julia yes. <laughs> yeah. because it's true Stephen <laughs> is so supportive about your love for Tom Hiddleston. It's very sweet. <laughs> it is. And somebody last week posted about uh, congratulations on our thruple, which I thought that was really funny. <laughs> it's hilarious. And, I, I mean, love they're it. not I love it. <laughs> um, also a show we need, right? Um, but we'll get to that because, you know, that's that's really not that far off if we're talking the Loki character with this big revelation that they, well, I guess it's not a revelation. It's a confirmation. Yes, Ashley, am I right? Because... Yes, this wasn't new to the, okay. This wasn't new to the comic book people. This nope. is just new to the MCU. So yes. exciting <laughs> stuff. Okay, uh, Ashley, quick, tell people where they can find you. Julia, tell people where they can find you. And then before we jump in, I have some thoughts that I don't want to get lost later. So I'm going to word vomit them out and ask y'all's thoughts on these things, and then we'll get into like more details. Perfect. Hi, friends. I'm Ashley Saunders. You can find me at withashleyandco.com, on Twitter at thatashleyaron, at cbr.com, as well as my own podcast, The Geek Girls Universe. Hey, Hiddlestands. It's me, Julia. Um, And you can find me on social media at queenie11078, Um, you know, or anywhere on the internet, really, where there's a topic about Tom Hiddleston. That's where you'll find me. That's where Commenting, you'll... gushing, loving, forever and ever. Amen. Always, always, <laughs> yes. Uh, and uh, I am Patty Holiday. You can find me on all socials at No Guilt Life. And currently, I will admit, I'm going between back and forth between gushing about um, Loki and talking about it and uh, Fast and Furious and Fast 9. I'm kind of going down this rabbit hole right now and... I just love those shows. So that's probably a whole nother thing that I will hopefully um, cover on a fangirl episode in the future. But I got to talk about my love for that series. I just love it so much. Um, 
Okay. So, <laughs> Love it. Just, just giving you guys some information that might, you know, come down the line later. Um, <laughs> all right. So now let's talk about Loki. Now, like I said before, this episode was different. One of the things that was majorly different is that we are out of the TVA. So none of those characters from the TVA make an appearance um, in this entire episode. So we get no Mobius, which we love Mobius. We get no mm-hmm. Miss Minutes, which we get no, you know, we love Miss Minutes. Um, we, we did get have... Ravana for a bit. You got Rinslayer. Yep. Yeah. You got, we got, we got, got her for about Rinslayer. Oh, got a got a hot and, and yeah 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 yeah, yeah. And so mm-hmm. we got some we got some kind of that that spidey sense that Ashley was saying and saying that she was yes. thinking she was sus. It's obviously mm-hmm. now coming true. Um, so that happened. So I think though that this uh, whole episode gave us a different tone. And what I liked about it was um, there was still plenty of action. The banter was off the charts between these two. Oh my um, gosh. The two yes. Lokis are, are the major focus and they're talking back and forth and they're getting to know each other and having this whole storyline and development where our Loki is asking Sylvie all these questions about her life and, you know, finding out some, some information about her. That really helped me as somebody who doesn't, I, I just don't get like how they're the same thing, like two of the same thing. Like on Twitter, people are like, please don't sh- say you ship them. Don't ship them. And I was like, because they're related or they're the same thing or they're like two of the, like, I get that. Like, I know, I understand what they meant, right? Yeah. <laughs> Is that we yes. don't want that to happen. That's not going to be a thing because no. they're the that same. Would be weird. <laughs> yeah. So, so then I was like, and I know from comics because my, my good friend Ashley has mentioned, um, this could be like a, daughter of his or it could be a sister of his Mm -hmm. right we just were not sure yeah okay yeah okay (laughs) so all right so that helps um so this episode actually kind of helped me kind of wrap my head around uh what was going on because at one point they're having this conversation and they're going back and forth about um their lives and like he's like well did they tell you you were adopted and she was like oh yeah i knew you know i mean yeah. so like they have these parallels but they're also very different he has this beautiful discussion about his mom she doesn't oh. remember hers right i oh, know we'll yeah. get to that one we'll, we'll talk about that but what i wanted to ask or point out was my initial as i'm watching this it was confusion but it wasn't confusion from plot points it was actually coming to me confusion from the from our Loki character. And the reason I'm saying that is because remember, this is 2012 Loki, right? right. Mm-hmm. Why is he so dang charming and so sweet and so nice? Like I'm almost feeling like I, I feel like empathy, more empathy than normal to him. Like I am not feeling that he's I, I know you never trust a Loki and definitely don't trust 2012 Loki. I know that on some level, but I feel like maybe It feels very genuine, doesn't it? Doesn't it? Yeah. Okay. So I I was like, that was my question was, am I the only one feeling that? Are you two just smarter than me? And I'm okay. (laughs) So, so I was feeling that and I had to sit and think it through today. And I thought maybe the reason he's playing it this way, because, you know, Tom Hiddleston, he, he's so smart, right? I mean, he's so good. We've discussed how, Um, I'm, I'm kind of feeling like, when he sat in the TVA and he watched the story of his life play out, mm-hmm. did that, j- just watching all of that, did that impact him? Did that change him enough? Even though he's still 2012, dude, but seeing how, what was to come and what was going to happen, was that enough to kind of move this storyline forward for him to where I'm not saying he's good guy Loki yet. I, I still expect him to be a, a mischievous scamp. I still expect him to try to screw over Sylvie in some way. Like I'm not like totally there yet, but I did feel like this want of a connection with her was genuine and was real and wanting to work together with her was genuine and real, real, not just a means to an end, like kill her off, get rid of her so that I can go rule the universe. Right. Even though what she wants to do is, not what he wants to do. So that was my that was my thought that I wanted to throw out there and see if anybody else felt that way about Loki or if it was just me. Oh, I definitely did. And it was weird because he did seem very, very comfortable with somebody that he that A tried to kill him <laughs> and mm-hmm. you know um blew up the timeline and all that. It was really weird um to feel sort of that empathy for him. But and I wonder if it's more, 
I do think that there is that she's a means to an end, maybe in some degree, um, in that he's trying to maybe make amends, you know, because as far as he knows, Thor might be dead, right? He knows Odin's gone. He knows his mom's gone. He knows Asgard's gone. Mm -hmm. So is it if he thinks that he can somehow overthrow the TVA and and somehow alter his timeline? I don't know. It just it seems I'm with you. I don't I don't quite trust that he is redeemed. I mean, hell, it took him (laughs) how many movies to right right (laughs) to redeem himself. And he had to cool out quite a bit with the Grand Master for a while yeah. to like, yeah, to get it all together. So, yeah, I'm not like, you know, I'm, I'm not, I'm not, I, I, look, I was burned by the WandaVision. I'm not going to sit here and go, oh, he's amazing. He's so sweet. And then yeah. later I'll be like, womp, womp, womp. Yeah, I no. know. I'm going to hold that. But it just felt like the way they were playing this, that that was maybe, a, maybe that's the reason why they were playing it this way is that we saw it play out. He saw the video of his life and it Mm -hmm. did have an impact on him. And it's just simply that simple um, that maybe that did make a difference. Um, Ashley, what do you think? Well, yeah, because what else is he going to (laughs) do? Well, I don't know. I mean, he, he was kind of a jerk. So maybe he doesn't, maybe he, and also if he's thinking throughout the TVA and throughout the timeline, then he's thinking he can still like get his way. Right. And so is he thinking that, is that truly what's going on? So I, I think it's she's a means to an end. I don't think he's I think what intrigues him about her is that she is him, but Mm -hmm. a different version. So being Loki, you know, here you have somebody who has more of a life experience that's kind of similar to his, whereas like Thor obviously wasn't adopted, you know, doesn't have that whole outsider mentality. Um, I I genuinely think he was affected a bit by watching his story play out. And even though 2012 Loki is a mischievous scamp, if you go back to the first Thor movie, Loki is not the worst. Thor really shouldn't have been in charge because Thor was (laughs) was the worst. He was such a brat. Yeah. Whereas Loki was like, um, you know, definitely more cool headed, level headed. And even throughout the other movies, yes, he banished Odin to the nursing home, but Asgard like stayed out of people's business, wasn't going to war. It's like Loki's not as bad as he sometimes comes off being. Mm-hmm. So I think 2012 Loki is still kind of genuine, yeah. you know, of a person or a god, <laughs> as he calls yeah. himself, you know. So, but no, definitely Sylvie is a means to an end, but he's going to find out some things along the way about her. Yeah. And he definitely, I think, wants to take over the TVA, one, because it's the ultimate power in the universe, and that obviously appeals to him. And Mm -hmm. then two, I think seeing his story play out, he wants to prevent his mom dying above all else. I'm sure that's what it is. Yeah, that was, we hadn't talked about that yet, but I kind of felt like when he saw this happen that... In Loki's head, he's thinking, well, if I can control the TVA or I can control this timeline somehow or these timekeepers somehow, I can change my mom. Like, I don't know that he would. I don't think he I mean, he probably cares on some level about Asgard, but we know what he feels for his mom. Right. And so I wondered that as well, if if that was his ultimate, like what he's trying to to get to um, at the end here. So you say that. Sylvie is him is a a version of him yeah is there any is there any I don't know is there any point of like he knows he's gonna die but he's now okay with that because he knows she lives on like so that like you know what I'm saying like if he accepts the timeline and he's gonna die anyway but some part of him will live on is there any kind of resolution there or can multiple Lokis live on all over the place? I mean, I know comic book says yes, but does this Loki (laughs) believe that that's okay and that that doesn't bother him? I mean, he calls her a what faded photocopy of himself. (laughs) Mm -hmm. So I don't think he cares so much that she survives. Yeah. I don't, I don't think he has that kind of personal connection. Like I said, I think he's more just intrigued by the fact that, this is a version of him and he can interact with her. Mm-hmm. Just like, I think he'll be intrigued by the other Lokis that are rumored to be in this show. Mm-hmm. Got it. Ooh, got I it. Wait. I know. That's I gonna, it's going to get fun, right? It's going to get fun. <laughs> okay. 
Okay. Um, all right. Well, this, that, that was just kind of my, my little deep thoughts of what was happening with um, Loki is, uh, and I wanted to get that out there and have that discussion, but let's go ahead and do a, a, a recap and start talking about what happened in this episode and how we felt about, you know, where the, where the, where is this going? How are they getting off this planet? <laughs> Did I mean, and also like, I have to laugh because Obviously, Sylvie knows a lot more than we, I mean, we were told how much she knows in this episode when she's like, you picked the worst apocalypse of them all. So she's been around these blocks before. She knows these apocalypses, right? So Mm -hmm. has her entire life been like bouncing around all these apocalypses? Well, she kind of implied that, didn't she? Yeah. 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 She 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 made that line when she was talking about her postman postman and and something. (laughs) Yeah. I need to know who you think that is, Ashley. I'm trying to figure out if she's just being cheeky or if I thought it was cheeky. Yeah, Yeah, I thought thought she was being cheeky, but yeah, I think it's kind of cheeky. Right. (laughs) But I have some thoughts about how they're going to get off the moon. Okay. Because All right. We can get to that. When yeah. We get- yeah. Let's go. <laughs> let's go. All right. So this week we start off with a flashback with Hunter C20, who was the hostage, right? That uh, Sylvie took. And she and Sylvie are sitting at a table in a restaurant drinking margaritas, being besties. And Sylvie is trying to get answers out of her about the timekeepers. And C20 seems a little confused. Like, wait a second. I remember the restaurant. I remember this place, but I don't really remember you. And Sylvie's all like, ha ha, you're just tired, friend, because we're besties and you can tell me anything. But what Sylvie's actually doing is using her mind manipulation powers, the enchantment, to make C20 seem like she's in this, uh, you know, this restaurant in this place and that they're friends. She does reveal to Sylvie that the elevators are gold. So it's like you're going to find the timekeepers via the golden elevators and That's when, like, Loki shows up with the TVA, and then, bam, they go through the door. So where they went? They went back to the TVA. She doesn't realize her powers don't work there, so Sylvie's trying to take out the Minutemen with enchantment. Doesn't work, but homegirl can fight, so she just took them out the good old-fashioned way with a good butt kicking. Loki tracks her down, but before he does that, he grabs his knives out of Mobius's locker because, you know, he's not stupid. (laughs) <laughs> he's like i'm tracking me me is pretty deadly better bring some weapons i love that he did that that he like oh, paused and went back and i was like yes the knives <laughs> yes i love his knives it's just so classic him uh they find each other they're facing off and it's like an exchange of not only physical blows but also like a a sibling-esque kind of banter She's like, you're in my way. And he goes, you are my way. Let's work together. And she's, you know, no. And he goes, you lack vision. I'm just dying. (laughs) Yeah, that was so funny. She's like, whatever, dude, like move. I'm trying to do something. I'm trying to do something. And he's like, oh, you're going to help me whether you like it or not kind of thing. Uh, Renslayer finds them. And Lady Loki, Sylvie, tries to use Loki as a bargaining chip. But Renslayer doesn't care. So Loki takes the TVA temp pad, which is that uh, rectangle phone looking thing, how they open the doors. It's officially called the temp pad. And he opens a door and they escape. However, they escape to Lamentus One. And as Patty said earlier, the worst apocalypse apparently in the brochure that Loki did not read. <laughs> <laughs> Um, they just had some really cute lines in this, and he, oh of course, delivered them like expertly. But you know what? She gave, she gave as as good as she got. Like she was yes. also like firing in all cylinders. Absolutely loved this character playing off of him. It was great. They they had a lot of fun to uh, with this with this episode. I think. Oh, for sure. So there, she's like, great, you know, idiot. <laughs> We're in this place. This is bad. They go to use the temp pad. The battery is dying. And that sucks. There's no quick charge apparently on Lamentis. Loki's (laughs) magic works, however. He takes it from her and hides it in like a pocket dimension, some sort of other space. It's not in his pocket, which I'll get to when we get to that. (laughs) Because I just, I'm like, hmm, it seems a little suspicious, Loki. But anyway, Mm -hmm. it's not in his pocket physical pocket just remember that okay 
So they go into an abandoned mining shack. Sylvie tries to use her powers on Loki, and he's just like, "What? What are you doing? Why are you? Why are you doing that? It's not going to work. My mind is too strong for you." And they're going back and forth like siblings. Uh, he's called her a variant. She's called him a variant. She's like, "Don't call me a variant." He's like, "I'm not going to call you a Loki. You're a like I said the what the faded photocopy." Or whatever, <laughs> two bit photocopy of me, and she goes, so "That's I'm not ki- who I am anymore. I'm Sylvie now." And he's not really impressed with her alias. No. Yeah, mm-hmm. I'm gonna I'm gonna jump in here for a second. So here's okay. another thought: Have it? Have you guys thought of this? What you know how she says uh, in the beginning? You know, sometimes the, their minds are so strong. I really have to work harder on those, and I have to like tweak and do things different. What if, like? opening scene of next is we're actually at the TVA and all of this was her working an enchantment on Loki trying to get through to him. Ooh. So I think it's the opposite. I think it's uh, Loki working the enchantment on her. Oh, I like that. Ooh, I like dun, that even dun, dun. better. <laughs> okay. All right. All right. Continue. Continue. But I was like, what if it's all a dream? You know, yeah. one of those. <laughs> yes. I, like I said, I'm on that line, but I think it's the other way around. Okay. All right. Cool, cool, cool. Keep going. <laughs> All right. So then they have this whole discussion about what makes Loki a Loki, which, again, cracked me up. Um, <laughs> he, style. <laughs> yes. Authority, independent, style. And she goes, yeah, so the, uh, you work for the TVA? Mm, sure. Real stylish, <laughs> real independent, <laughs> you know. And he's like, oh, well, your plan sucks, too. So, again, it's that whole back and forth. Uh, he clearly, like Patty said, he clearly doesn't know as much as she does. He's not tech savvy, right? So this thing needs to be charged. They're trying to figure out how to charge it. But he's also not foolish enough to turn it over to her. (laughs) So she's just like, you know, she kind of shrugs him off when she's like, don't try to pretend like you know what you're talking about because you don't about this tech. Uh, They find this uh, widow woman who blasts Sylvie off the porch. (laughs) And Loki goes in attempting to trick her, disguised as her late husband, Patrice. But that also doesn't work because he's trying to charm her. And apparently Patrice didn't say she looked beautiful in 30 years. So sorry, Loki. Uh, She calls them both devils, which I thought was interesting. Because obviously the whole Mephesto thing from WandaVision carried over. And the stained glass image of the devil in episode one. Yeah, yeah I was going to say, and the devil was already mentioned in that episode one. So we're continuing with the devils. Now, did Mephesto and Loki have anything to do with each other in comics? Uh, I believe so. They've Okay. So, but I, I don't think it's Mephesto as much as I was all team Mephesto for one vision. I do not think well, it's <laughs> no. <laughs> Well, I I'm think- just laughing because I'm, I'm like, did the writers like know that was going to, you know, did they were like, oh, we got to throw this in there. Let's like, let's like goose them a little bit. Let's there was something about them. that last week, actually, the, there was an interview that was posted about Kate Heron saying like, stop trying to make Mephisto happen. It's not <laughs> good. <laughs> <laughs> Love it. Who knows? Uh, oh, wow, yeah, I, well, I think that they're calling, I mean, like the kid in episode one saying it's the devil based on their headpieces, right? Like yeah, when his right. horns are showing her, like the devil horns. Okay. Anyways, uh, the woman does tell them that there is an ark, an evacuation vessel on the edge of town. And she's like, but you're not going to get on it. Ha ha ha. They see a train. Loki disguises himself as a guard to get on it. But that was where his plan ended. So when they're asked for tickets... He's like, oh, uh, uh, we were just uh, told to uh, get on the train, right? And (laughs) Sylvie is like rolling her eyes and does the enchantment thing like, we already have tickets. It's fine. Let us through. I just, I was cracking up because again, it was like that whole, she gets on him about that, right? Like that wasn't a plan. That was like one thing. Plans have multiple steps. What is wrong with you? Uh, This is when they get into that discussion on the train about the mother's uh, he opens up about his. Sylvie seems a little emotional that she didn't have that in her life. But we do know she was adopted too. She doesn't really remember her mother. And she taught herself how to do the enchantment. She wasn't taught by anybody like Loki was taught by his mom. They get on a subject of love. Sylvie makes a joke about a postman that she's kind of kept up a relationship with through various apocalypses. <laughs> <laughs> Which like I think she's being cheeky. I just yeah. 
I don't really see like anybody in the comics, like nothing comes to mind necessarily uh, for that. And we get confirmation, or I should say in canon MCU confirmation of Loki's preferences. So Loki, he replies, he likes a bit of both when it comes to prince and princesses. What a moment. It was a moment and it didn't, it was great. It was great. It didn't feel it was, forced. It was just, no, it was great. It, was it didn't pander. It was just a very, it felt like a very natural, genuine, you know, I don't know. It yeah. was, it was so beautiful. And, and it, that's, that's part of the reason why I get up so early to watch it because I wanted to read the reactions on Twitter and just the, the, the way folks were reacting to it, just super happy for the visibility. It was like, happy pride y'all. Yes. <laughs> yes. Happy pride. Well, and I, and I loved how, um, how it was handled on both ends. Like, you know, she's kind of being like sisterly teasing them, you know, who, you know, Mm -hmm. who do you like, you know, and, and put it out there and open the door for him. And then he just, you know, was like, well, a little of both. I figure the same for you. Right. (laughs) And it was Mm -hmm. just, and there we have it. And so, Mm -hmm. yeah, I I thought it was nicely done. Well done. And um, uh, a, a good, good moment and definitely twitter was the place to be when that news like was confirmed because yeah. as we, we we've we've known even though i was not a comic book person i've known that that's always been hinted out and that loki's always been like this wild and that he's been like he's been a female for some times and then he's a male you know and he's like all kinds of different things happen in him and I think that was one of the concerns that people had was, well, they better not mess that up. They better keep that going forward. And Mm -hmm. they did it. They did it. Yeah. And honestly, it goes back to his, uh, the mythology roots because Loki is a shapeshifter in mythology. I mean, he appears as a male, a female, as different types of creatures and animals and Honestly, I feel he's kind of like David from Schitt's Creek. He's yeah. into yes. the wine and not the label. Right, 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 like right, that's, right, right. That's the kind of guy he is, you know? Yep. So I loved it. I was so I was so excited to see oh it. Oh, my gosh. Um, now I want a Saturday Night Live with David Rose and Loki talking about. Oh, my gosh. That would be the best. Look, oh, I'm throwing it out there. Visit Schitt's Creek. That would be Saturday amazing. Night Live. Oh. Let's Walk, make Open a out. portal and go to Schitt's Creek. That That's right. Amazing. That's oh. right. Okay. Yeah, that would be beautiful. Okay. Anyway, Dare to dream. Dare to dream. Yes. <laughs> oh, when my I fandoms collide. I know. <laughs> I know. I know. Um, we also get a beautiful... Um, oh montage of tom hiddleston singing and it was what i didn't know i needed in my episode three (laughs) well pro tip i mean if you do want more of tom hiddleston singing his i saw the light soundtrack is on itunes and you can hear him sing hank williams for many a track and it is quite lovely and soothing awesome i did not know that so i'll have to check that out all right so that's what Sylvie wakes up to, Tom singing, and I wouldn't be mad if I also woke up to Tom singing. However, <laughs> he is drunk or full, and uh, he's blown their cover. He is no longer wearing the guard uniform. He's back in his TVA suit. Clearly, he was not thinking that through. You know, he's singing. He throws his glass down, shouting, another, you know, like Thor, and... You know, basically not being low key. <laughs> I, yes, but I loved the Thor callback. I was I like, did too. yay! <laughs> My kids caught that one too. They're like, oh, Easter egg, Easter egg. <laughs> um, so drunk Loki again tries to do a metaphor about love being a dagger. It was good. It started off good. He kind of, he needs to work on his metaphors. I'm just going to say it. <laughs> I was tracking with it. I was like, yeah, yeah. Wait, what? <laughs> yep. I, was, I was like, oh, this one's good. This is way better than the salad. And I'm like, oh, nope, nope. We lost it. All right. Well, <laughs> we tried. In my heart, I was like, is the dagger Mobius? Please let it be Mobius. <laughs> <laughs> um so the guards like are clearly are suspicious they come back in loki tries to play it off it does not work they start fighting he throws this guy out of the train he's like bye and you know sylvie's fighting and then all of a sudden loki's thrown out of the train sylvie follows him because he has that temp pad and she needs it otherwise they are stuck on this godforsaken piece of rock 
However, in the tumble, because it was a really bad one, according to Loki, the temp pad was broken, but it wasn't in his pocket, right? It was magicked away somewhere. Mm-hmm. So how did it get crushed? Okay, see, That's, I didn't even catch that. I, I really, think it's shenanigans. I really I thought he, I was believing Loki. See, I'm so gullible. Oh my gosh, he's got my number. I totally believe him. <laughs> but Loki. how does she believe him? That's the thing. Like, how, or is she also being like, "I'm going to pretend like I believe you, but I really don't believe you." But I'll play I this game think- with you too. I mean, one, I don't think she understands fully what he's capable of because she only can do the enchantment stuff. And she's like, oh, so you're a magician. (laughs) And maybe with her reference point of a magician, she thinks that it's like the rabbit in a hat or the the coin or whatever. It's like he pocketed it, but we know that he kind of did not put it in a physical pocket. Yeah, the Tesseract would like a word. Of where things go to hide. <laughs> exactly. So, okay, Loki, you're sus, but you're yeah. always sus, so it's fine. <laughs> All right. See, this is why I have you guys to point these things out. <laughs> Now, you guys got to keep me from from believing all the things. <laughs> don't fall for it, Patty. Or, or yes. like they said in Avengers, are you ever not going to fall for that? You know, yeah. the crazy thing is, is I usually do catch like plot holes like that. Or, you know, I catch things yeah. like that. And for some, I maybe it's just Tom Hiddleston and I'm just like dreaming. I mean, I just, he's very yeah. distracting. I'm so. telling you, he it's working. <laughs> it is working, my sir. All right. <laughs> Uh, So now they're stuck walking, right? And again, there's more of that back and forth. He's like, he's trying to figure out how enchantment works. And he gets her to tell him by saying, well, can't you just like enchant me? And then I don't have to walk. And oh, like, I can just take a nap. And then you wake me up. It's like very much like a kid whining. Like, I'm tired of walking around Disney. Like, can we sit down? No. Um, But she goes, that's not how it works. So she explains how it works. She needs to be close to the person. You know, she needs to be able to touch them. Proximity is key. Weaker minds are easier to control. Uh, Stronger minds are harder because it's almost like she's there, but so is the other person. And they're almost wrestling for control. And she's like, yeah, you know, that mind of Hunter C20 was so messed up and her memories were clouded. She's like, I pulled that restaurant memory from something like hundreds of years ago before she fought for the TVA. And Loki did like. Dun, dun, dun. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. yeah. I did catch this one. Y'all, I caught this one. I paid attention. I got it. I'm glad you caught that one. Because it was like, he goes, say what? <laughs> yeah. and, and, and legit, y'all, the first thing I thought of, the very first thing I thought of was Mobius on a jet ski. I'm yep. like. That's why he loves jet skis because they are cool. He knows they're cool because he's been on one before. Exactly. Yeah. So that proves it. The TVA has been lying. The timekeepers didn't create the TVA and everyone in it. They're stolen variants, essentially. The TVA is Mm -hmm. variants. It makes sense for like Mobius liking jet skis or the random like uh, soda and drinks from Earth. Yep. That these people are like enjoying. So they are sus. I knew but it. But Casey, time. Casey doesn't know what a fish is. So what's up with that? You think Casey, do you think it's any mix? Like there's a mix of variants and like real whatever's that the TVA um, did create? It's, I don't know because Loki goes, you know, that's not what I was told. And she's like, well, that, you know, that's the truth of it. And he's like, they don't remember anything. Like they don't understand it. Is what he's something along those lines is what he says. So I think because their memories are so jumbled, yeah. And if they've been there for so long, it's almost like, like in Pirates of the Caribbean, when like you become part of the ship because you've been on the ship too long. And Davy Jones' ship, it's kind of like they just get like absorbed, right? Right. Well, and, and in Casey's situation, like Mobius is out in the real world, like he's seeing and experiencing, you know the world yeah he kind of gets like a refresher almost yeah casey is behind the desk at all times so yes at some point he might forget what a fish is and wouldn't have any clue which that made me think last week because you know the scene where going back to last week when they were researching um kabuli and all that stuff and and even before that when loki fell asleep i'm like do those people ever sleep 
do they go anywhere? Do they just stay there the whole time and stay awake? I mean, I guess if time is different in the TVA, I, I, I don't, I don't guess they would, but it just seemed weird. Yeah, we right? definitely like, didn't see any like kind of. Nobody goes home, clocks yeah. out. Right. You know? Mobius just got up and walked around when he started yawning, like, eh, and then he was back to life. It was weird. Yep. Yeah, and he's constantly down in those energy drinks. So, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> all right, all right, all right. So, yeah, that was the big like walk off moment, yeah. and that oh, was yeah. where I felt like um, things changed with Loki. Like that, he started thinking ten steps ahead. You know, he was already ten steps ahead in one direction, but maybe this backtracked him and changed his his trajectory for things. Now, here's my other thing about Loki. This is the other like point that. I feeling some kind of something towards him is originally they were coming down. And like when he was in Pompeii, he was like, this is cool. They're all going to die. Right. Like yeah. literally he's like, yes. Gideon, whatever. At this point though, he said something like we could take that arc and go, you know, it's filled with people. So let's take it and let's go. Let's like, let's get off this thing with. So do you feel like, there's any more like softening towards like wanting to save people. And was, didn't he say about the old lady in the shack? Like, why didn't she want to leave the shack? Like there was that too. And then when they were standing there, um, like watching everything start to blow up, he said, these people are all, they're going to leave them here to die or something like that. Yeah. Yeah. So there's, I mean, it wasn't giddy at all. It was kind of like this, the horror of the moment hit him like, Oh yeah. I I just feel like that level, that part of Loki is coming out stronger in this episode um, for whatever the reasons than the gleeful <laughs> whatever Loki that we had <laughs> yeah. before, maybe because he was actually part of what was happening and he knew he didn't have like an easy way out himself. And so, because they were fighting for their lives or too. They he? were, well, <laughs> yes, I know, uh, <laughs> but they, he, they were dodging things. Right. Yeah. And we're about no. to get to that, to where they're yeah. finally trying to get to the arc. And, and he, by the way, y'all Tom Hilston has always understood the assignment with the hair. Ooh, Have girl. you noticed how yes. often he works that hair? Girl. Yes. yes. <laughs> it's hot. It's hot. Like, it just, uh, just. Well, when it gets all floofy, like when he's uh-huh. uh, yes. you know, tossed around. Yes. When he was dancing yes, and singing. And then when he's fighting and like that mm-hmm. one scene where we're going to talk about it in a second. But anyway, he like uses his powers to stop the, yeah. the thing it's falling like, on Maybe he's part of it. Mm-hmm. Yeah, it's Loki. Mm-hmm. Yep. I, I, I'm just saying, I can't see how any male or female could like say no to that kind of hair. Act. He has no right. To be that fine. I'm sorry. It, there's an How audacity. There's an audacity How about it. Absolutely. <laughs> all right. All right. All right. So, uh, sorry, distracted. Um, hey, the, we're the fangirls. That's this is what we that's do, what we do okay? exactly. Um, <laughs> and that's why you want to listen to us and not like some boring dudes who are not going to know how awesome his hair is because it's pretty <laughs> awesome. Um, all right. So back to the story. So they, ha- they uh, where were we? Oh, they discovered the variants, the situation yeah. there. And now, and like, it's just clicking, I think with Loki and maybe his plan is changing or whatever, but something happened there. That was a moment that we need to take note of. Yeah. That definitely was the big reveal for this episode, for sure. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. Um, yeah. But the more imminent problem is that they're about to die. And <laughs> they, they need to get off this moon. And they're in, they make it to the town. And they're like, all right, I gotta find, we got to find the Ark. So it's the ship that's supposed to take everybody off the planet. Sylvie has made it clear the Ark never leaves the planet. Everybody is destroyed. And he's like, well, we'll just get to it. And like, we've never been on it. So of course we can, you know, change the course of the timeline. Um, They're fighting their way to get to the Ark. They're fighting people. They're just dodging debris. Uh, Yes, a tower begins to fall on them. And Loki saves them both. Yeah, using his powers of telekinesis, which we have seen him use before, just not on this big of a scale. Or there's the argument that he used the time stone that he pocketed in episode one. I think he was just using his powers and he's saving the time stone for something else, like when it's actually active, because it only should work in its own timeline, not this one. Based on the rules that they kind of already laid down in episode one. Sorry, time stone theory people. <laughs> <laughs> um, 
So that happens and they're like, oh, there's the Ark. And then bam, you know, <laughs> the ship is destroyed and that's where we leave it, right? Loki's staring at it. Sylvie walks off just like, She is done whatever. with that ish. She I is can't. so over it. I feel like in that moment, she was Valkyrie in Ragnarok yeah. when she's like, we also need cup holders because we're going to die. So drink. drink. <laughs> like, I'm going to go get a drink because now yeah. we're dying. So whatever. Yeah. I'm out. And he's staring at it like, oh, this is bad. <laughs> what a way to leave us hanging, though. Whew. I know. Honestly. Rude. Honestly. When, yeah. When, when the credits came up, my husband just looked at me and said, wait, what? <laughs> Well, and that's a note. This was 10 minutes shorter than the other yes. two episodes that we've gotten so far. Um, so yeah. what the Marvel gods giveth, they also can take it away <laughs> by cutting us short at this point. Um, so Ashley, what are your thoughts? Um, obviously, you think he still has the pad. Yeah. Um, and he's going to figure out some way secretly how to, uh, or maybe he did, maybe while she was asleep. Do you think he, that's why he was singing and dancing was because he already gotten this thing fired up? Um, so I have a couple theories of how they're going to get off. If we're going off of that, this is, isn't an illusion and this is actually happening. Yeah. Let's One, pretend let's do that first and then okay. we'll talk about the other. Yeah. Yeah. So let's pretend it's real. Uh, either he has the temp pad and he's going to use it to get them off the uh, moon or he's going to save it for a rainy day. (laughs) That'll be the other option of that. Uh, Two, Mobius and the TVA will show up because Mm -hmm. they'll have figured out where they went. Or three, if he has the time stone and he can make it work, he'll rewind time long enough for them to get on the arc and get off the, the moon. Those are my oh, thoughts. I if didn't it's think real, about the time stone. Hmm. Yeah. That's <laughs> if it's if I it's had real. forgotten that he grabbed that until uh, Yeah. Hmm. Yeah. Those are my thoughts. <laughs> okay, and so go back to the whole you think he's mind mind messing with her. Cause he made it sound like he was like, how could, how do you do that? Like, I don't know how to do that. Teach me how to do that. So do you think he just like started trying it? <laughs> because he's that quick, that quick of a study and that good of a magician that he just like was like, hey, I'm jumping in and I'm just going to make this happen. Or what's I mean, up with he, that? He definitely knows about projecting illusions because he talks about it in episode two when they're going over the Loki powers and he does his like Professor Loki, Loki school kind of thing. Of like, hey, that's not the same thing. Duplication is not the same thing as manipulation, and et cetera, mm-hmm. et cetera. Um, so what strengthens the argument that it's not real is that after that moment in time when she tries to enchant him and he's like, it's not working. Prior to that, when they were running into that building, the stuff that was falling from the sky was like very dangerous. Like it was going to hit them. They were dodging yeah. it. They were running. They were that, that this and that. And it, it was... It was precarious. However, when they come out of it, all of a sudden, all the falling debris is safely some distance away. Like, it's not actually going to hit them. Yep. They just walk that, it seemed- to this open planet that's about to be destroyed in what, like, T minus 12 hours? It and- seemed lazy, but then I was like, there has to be a reason why that's happening. Right. And now, well, you're making me think, hmm, okay. Okay. Right. And I mean, yes, once they get into the city, things get a little bit more dicey with them, but still nothing out of his control, really. Right. And they're going to make it off. Otherwise, there's not a reason to have a series about Loki in three more episodes. <laughs> Obviously. Um, right, 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 so, right, right, right. Yeah, I think he's probably, if he's doing this, he's using it as a way to, one, figure out her plans, two, figure out what she knows how she does what she does so that he can stay steps ahead of her and figure out how best to use her. And then three, gain her trust in order to use her in his grand plan of taking on the timekeepers slash TVA. Huh. All right. And so obviously we're at this point where we know something sus with the TVA, with the timekeepers. Renslayer obviously knows something about all this because she's too high up to not, like be involved immediately involved in all of this. So I'm guessing next episode we get a little bit more now. 
spoiler alert, if anybody doesn't want to hear this, plug your ears, fast forward 30 seconds, whatever you need to do. Um, It's not, this isn't like confirmed plot points. This is just a heads up that Tom Hiddleston has said in some interviews. So I'm not going to like really spoil anything, but I'm just going to give you kind of a heads up, but I still want to be respectful of that. So if you need to go ahead and fast forward, go ahead and do that. Go ahead. Keep going. Keep going. All right. Um, Tom Hiddleston had said that there was some very emotional moments and some things that happen in episodes four, at the end of episode four and into episode five. Yep. So yep. what's next? Yay. Yep. Um, he also said they were his favorite episodes yes, of the yes, whole series. They were, he sure did. Mm-hmm. So I'm yeah. like giddy. I Me know. Too. I know. <laughs> and we, and, and let's just like, let's just say this up front. Marvel, Marvel. If you <laughs> dare oh, do something where Tom Listen, Hiddleston is not in episode six, I will burn it to the ground. <laughs> I will personally come and find you and the start. Loki with- army will come. That's right. For Absolutely. You. Don't you dare do Don't it. Play. We only get six. You would give us all six with Loki in it. Like, I'm okay that Mobius wasn't in this one. But I'm just saying, if you try to. Do something where Loki's wrapped up in five and he's not in six. I will oh, riot. No. We will We're riot fighting. at three three AM Eastern time when that episode comes out. Like it's gonna <laughs> yep. happen. So y'all don't want any of that. I'm just saying nope. you don't want you don't any want of that kind of heat, Cam. You don't you want that do kind of heat. Do not. They and and I know I know I know before. they just like wrapped up and sent it off because I saw um, yeah. I saw that, that computer that she just sent it off. So I know it's not too late. That's right. <laughs> um, so Kevin Feige, if this is in your possession, because I know you're listening, um, and <laughs> you need to make some edits, you go get with your girl and y'all fix this. That's all I got. That's say. right. That's just it. I just I can't. But yes, I'm excited to see what happens over these two next two episodes. <sighs> the meat of the the whatnot. Hopefully, my hope is that. Yes, we'll be put through the ringer and the emotional because we love that. We hate it. We love it. You know how this goes. But then hopefully that last episode will have some resolution of some sort. But I'm I'm expecting and I'm okay with some kind of cliffhanger, some kind of like leading us into the next Marvel projects that are coming out. Doctor because- Strange. <laughs> yes. I mean, how can it not be, right? That right. this is exactly. Spider-Man. Speaking- Yes. Yeah, this is speaking Doctor Strange language, and I don't know enough about Shang Chi, but does this possibly have anything to do with that storyline? Um, like, I don't know how he fits really. in with everything. Okay, okay, I didn't know if he like also fit into Doctor Strange's world in some way, but I would say Falcon and Winter Soldier has the potential to tie into Shang Chi. Okay, cool. Oh, ooh, I like that. Ooh. You guys know how I like Simu. Mm-hmm. Yeah, mm-hmm. Simu, love him. Mm-hmm. <laughs> I, him and uh, and Naki together, that could be fun. Ooh. All right, yes. Disney. All right, Marvel. Like, y'all, y'all make this happen. All right. Uh, well, I think that's it. Any last final words? Any last final anything we want to sum up before we meet again next week and have some more discussions on our favorite show right now? Uh, I more think of I this. said it all. <laughs> all more right. of this please inject it directly into our veins right, more right, Tom right, right. Hiddleston <laughs> yes, more singing more dancing please we okay. need it. <laughs> um, so we are going to keep recapping these every week until uh, the season is over you can also join us in the Marvel Moms Facebook group or the No Guilt Disney uh, Facebook group on uh, Facebook Avi um, and that's where we have a lot of these uh, discussions and talks and Julia has been keeping us just just so entertained <laughs> with all of the Loki updates between her and Nicole. Nicole's on yes. it too, man. But Nicole's always oh, yeah. on it. Um, the memes and the pictures. And Julia has a shirt every week and an outfit yes. every week that she dresses up in to watch Loki in. So you guys got to come see this. Um, come yeah. join us. That's in the Marvel Moms <laughs> Facebook group. Just and we would wait love to have the you. finale. My outfit for the finale is going to be chef's kiss please please, uh, please tell me this is like on par with some of your halloween costumes like, it might we- be <gasps> julia it might be I'm so you know? excited, I'm so excited. <laughs> okay all right well with that 
fangirl squeal i'm gonna go ahead and wrap this up um and please please come uh follow us on social media ask us any questions you might have um also invite your friends because as you know it is no fun to fangirl alone bye y'all bye, bye.